I'm back. Right guys, so I haven't filmed anything for a long time but what I have done is I've actually caught my first double on the last day of the season, well last day for me uh, a couple of days before the end of the season and I've had my first double from our local ponds 14 pounds on the nose, really really pleased, just had a 7 pounder before it I'm absolutely made up So what we're going to do is we're going to return her now, so you want to follow me Jack? Yep Jack's with me at the moment, so I'm just going to sit on the edge of the wall. Oh, I'm nearly falling. <laughs> so, there he is, or she. She's really strong. She's giving me an absolute nightmare. Beast of a run, weren't it? Yeah, it was a nightmare of a run. So I'm just going to hold her. You can see she's kicking away. I'm just going to roll her just to revive her. Gills are flaring lovely. And there she goes. Straight off. Really made up with that one. I just really hope Jack gets one now. But to finish on a double, like I said, I really wanted to do. What I'll do, you probably won't see this till later on in the year. Um, when I get on in the summer and I start building some more videos. But really made up with that one. So let's get ready for the next season. Shamal, tight lines. Hello and welcome to a new vlog. Yes, I know it's been absolutely ages since I've done my last one and it's really, really good to be back. You just saw some footage a minute ago of my last Predator trip of the season. So it would have been back at the mid-March, so March the 14th, 15th. And I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that and what led up to that. Uh, in a minute but um, I've also got another little trip that I'll show you as well later on in the video a little uh, recent predator trip a little mess around a little reconnaissance trip which I'll go into depth a little bit more about and uh, show you some footage from that as well but um, I've also got some photos to show you but <coughs> excuse me we'll talk about that trip in March then we'll talk about bits and pieces what I've been up to and then we'll show you that that um, the trip recent trip so Back in March, um, as some of you know, like I lost my I lost my laptop with all my stuff on it. It blew up. Didn't have a camera. I was filming on a compact, and you know, so on and so forth. I was literally broke as broke as broke as broke. I had no money or nothing. Anyway, two weeks towards the end of the Predator season, um, I invited Jack to come and fish with me at the local ponds. Decided to do the top ponds. It's quite small. I didn't want it to be too daunting fishing the larger lake with him. Jack's never fished a, a weedy shallow lake before, and sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of nails to get your head around it, especially if you're new to a, a fishing situation. Um, I've been there many a times in different various situations. Anyway, managed to win quite a free panda for him on the drop. Pike took it on the drop in a little hole within the weed, and later on in that session, I had a nine pounder something like that so i'll show you jack's three pounder and as you can see it was a nice little fish and i think he was really pleased with that i think the fact that he actually caught something you know made him happy showed him his fish there and they're willing to feed with, even within shallow water weedy water um and i'll show you a picture of my nine pounder again a very clean fish as you can see it was actually really nicely marked and uh uh, the way it took was quite funny, um, it literally flew across halfway through the lake before I even had a chance to get on a rod and uh, 
<laughs> and here it was uh, in a matter of five, six, five, sorry about that, five or six seconds, it was literally halfway across the lake. Anyway, that was a nice little session and um, I knew that I was going to hopefully get out before the end of the season. So this was two, se two sessions, sorry, two weeks leading up towards the end of the season. So I decided to um, go all out on the last day of the season and leading up to that I found out I had a new job. So the peace of mind was absolutely fantastic. Where I'm working now, so working security for the museum is where I'm working now. And I had absolute peace of mind. I knew I was walking to a new job, so I could relax and think, I've got a couple of more days predator fishing, um, and I want to do the last session on my local ponds, which I've concentrated on this year. Um, and it's been a really good year. It's been ups and downs. So anyway, going into that final session, I invited Jack again. Jack accepted because obviously he'd done, he'd seen fish being caught two weeks previous, and he caught one himself. But he was a little bit late turning up, and. Um, it was a little bit late turning up and uh, I got there a little bit early and I managed to bump into a few people that actually watch my YouTube channel and actually have subscribed to me on Facebook and that and it was really nice to talk to them actually. Um, do forgive me, I have forgot your name if you are watching this. Um, I do know who you are. Um, they're really nice lads. That night they had a couple of pike, uh, about one or two in the morning, something like that. Anyway, I was chatting to them for half an hour until Jack turned up and then we decided to fish the middle lake but down the other end, away from them and the carpers. They told me that the carpers were being played through the night by, car, uh, by pike, um, and sure enough, throughout the day, all we saw was pike moving through the shallows and the swims. Now, I was fishing two rods, and Jack was fishing one rod baited, um, and I was fishing two rods baited, and he was using the lure rod that he wanted to, to give a go. Anyway, he hooked, uh, he didn't hook anything. Um, he had a load of pike swimming in front of him, and he just couldn't, managed to get one of them to snag um, uh, and to take one of the lures so unfortunately he didn't get anything and then um, one of the carpers had a pike uh, was obviously picked up his swim feeder or boily or whatever it was um, so he managed to sort of pull that in uh, on his really heavy cart rods just literally dragged it in it's about six pounds anyway he released it quite well so there was no problem with the fish Anyway, we sat there all day with dead baits and lure fishing, conventional way you'd, you'd predate a fish and we didn't have a, absolute nothing. Anyway, come three o'clock, I said, Jack, we both agreed, let's move to the top lake, smaller lake, and hopefully we can't try and nab uh, a fish up there. You know, our last gas fish, one of us might nab one of the fish. Anyway, we wait for a couple of uh, pole fishermen and lure fishermen to, to sod off. Once they'd gone, we flew up there. Um, I put, my baits to the left hand side in a deep hole which he's got less weed on the other side of the weed that's in the margin so it's quite a deep area jack put his bait out i was using turbo smelt and roach and uh, jack was using uh, roach i think and obviously he was lure fishing as well so about 10 minutes to half 10 minutes 20 minutes something like that i had a seven pounder so nice little run nice little take nice little seven pounder i'll show you the picture now Yeah, you see it's a nice little fish. Um, didn't really part much of a fight. When we got it in, it was quite piggy fat fish. You know, he was only saying it was about three or four pounds. And I was like, Jack, no, it's about at least five, five, something like that, five and a half. Turned out it was seven pound. I was actually quite surprised. It didn't actually look it, but it was seven pound. Anyway, put that fish back and I am sitting there and we was chatting away and I said to Jack, I was just sort of going over what I was saying. I'd love to have a double on the last day of the season, you know. I had a double the season, the previous season, I had a 16-2 from a private river and it would have been nice to finish on a double, especially fishing this particular ponds, you know, I work quite hard to try and get myself a first double from now. Anyway, after saying that, what happens? One of my rods starts to slowly sneak away, the roach rod. Now I'm fishing on bottom with both of them. So I was, just, I was fishing uh, um, live bait sliders and I was fishing the baits right on bottom with egg sinkers and uh, yeah it started to slowly slide away now everyone's making fun of me about getting these three pound ten foot test curve rods are going to be like pokey broomsticks once i caught these fish not only it, i knew anyway proved to me but it also proved to jack that these rods you know if you get a double figure pike that's really going to put up a scrap you're really going to see it pull that rod over 
So that's what happened. So he's pulled the rod, arched over, tore off, tried to get into the near side margin, then tried to go out in the middle, give me a right old merry dance. Jack couldn't believe his eyes just to what the run was like. So anyway, got this run, got the fish in, um, 14 pounds on the button. I was over the moon, very nice clean fish. And the 14 pounder is the one you saw at the start of this, this vlog. Uh, absolutely beautiful fish he was, really nice. Went off really strong as you saw. Um, got some lovely captures. You know, which I've just shown you a second ago. And um, yeah, I was, I was over the moon, I'd had my double. And not only a double, a mid-double, I was really, really pleased. Anyway, she went back fighting fit, went back strong. And I thought, you know, that's it, I'm happy. Keep saying to Jack, right, now get your bait and pull it on the corner where I am. Now, the two weeks previous, the trip when I had the nine pounder and Jack had the three pounder, a 12 pounder was caught from that corner from a carp angler who was using boilies, bacon boilies. And Jack went over to help him unhook it and everything. So Jack had seen the double already. Um, and it was really good for, for morale actually catching that 14 pounder. So he knows the doubles in there, I knew there were doubles in there. Um, so we put that 14 pounder back, sat back, put another roach on, chucked it out. Anyway, my other rods went and it went really, really slowly, like a big fish take. Um, and I thought, here we go again. And it took a giant turbo smelt. So those, those giant turbo smelts that I get from Online Baits UK, fantastic I couldn't wait to use them and anyway this fish picked up went off slowly I thought oh this could be a big old girl struck into it hooped the rod over yes those 10 foot broomsticks as everybody calls them and winds me up about yeah hooped right over it's got the power there but they play fantastically well on double figure pike anyway went into the margin give me some deep runs give me absolute mayhem in front of me um, fresh the water to a foam Got it in, um, she didn't behave too well um, in the net. So we let her calm down for a couple of minutes. Got everything ready, the weighing equipment and everything. Got her on the mat. And once we got her in the mat, I went under to Gilla to unhook her and realized that my trebles had gone through and out underneath her, uh, underneath her gills. And they were resting in my fingers. All she had to do was thrash, and I would have had two size six trebles in my fingers. So I kept calm. I've been doing it a long time. If she thrashes, she thrashes. There's nothing I could have done about it. Anyway, um, Jack went and got some cutters, which I told him to do. Managed to cut them off and then take the trace out. Been doing so, I actually cut my hand as well. Um, so unfortunately, you know, that's what you see in the pictures, which I'll show you now. You can see she was a beautiful fish, but you see a little bit of blood there, that's, that's my blood. Um, got some lovely snaps as you saw, um, I was over the moon, Jack took some really nice photos for me. I did post some photos up on Facebook, but they were from my, my old iPhone, these ones are from my camera, so I hope the picture's done some justice. The fish, both fish, actually look bigger than what they were, so this fish here that I just caught was £15.7 I believe, if I remember rightly. Um, I did write it down, but I've lost a piece of paper. Um, so I had a 14 and a 15 pound seven, and I was absolutely over the moon. And now I'm actually convinced there are 20s. Now I'm gonna go there and try and beat a PB that I have, which is 16, 14. That's my PB, not very big, but you don't have to be uh, a crack pike angler or predator angler just because you haven't had a 20 or a 30. I've just not been not fortunate enough to, to fish many places that hold those fish, or when I do, fish them at very rare opportunities and occasions. So anyway, yeah, I was over the moon. I had not just my one double, but I actually had two doubles. Um, and the pictures, I was really over the moon with. So really, really good trip. And I can't stop thinking about it, and I really can't wait to get back there um, in the winter. That leads me on to the fact that I'm working now. Now, I absolutely love my job, um, but the problem with my job is, is that I've gone from literally having so much time on my hands to having no time on my hands. So I'm literally not having time to, to go fishing. In the four months I've been working, I've been fishing once. 
which is the trip you're going to see in a moment. Now, I've spent a lot of money as well, not only on camera equipment and laptop and stuff like that, but also on uh, fishing tackle. I bought two new tent rods, free, free spirit tent rods that I've not even tried yet. I bought loads of reels and my perch rods, my perch light bait rods. Uh, I bought tons and tons of luggage. So now, not only have I got my carp luggage, my NXG tracker carp luggage, um, I've now got a full range of Fo sorry, Shimano Purists. So the Shimano Purist OCD range, which I'm going to use for all my uh, specimen type fishing and my predator fishing. The way the bags and all the bits and pieces work together suits my fishing perfect. Can't hardly recommend it enough. No, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I just think when you're using good quality tackle, and I'm a bit of a luggage tart. You know, some people, they collect certain things in fishing. For me, luggage is the big thing for me. So yeah, bought some bits and pieces, bought a, um, a seat box, which has got like a backpack on it and all that. So I've been buying bits and pieces and spending my money uh, on tack on that. So a lot of things that have been sort of sneaking in my mind other than the fact that I've got some trips coming up. So I'm gonna be doing some more trips over my local docks, which is the reconnaissance video you're gonna see in a moment. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that um, in the next couple of videos that I'll do with that. Um, also going to the Thames, June 16th has actually just happened uh, yesterday, so I'd imagine most of you guys have been out fishing, especially you predator anglers with your lures and stuff, which leads me on to the fact that I want to really get back into lure fishing. Absolutely love lure fishing. It's always been second best to my, um, it's always been second best to my bait fishing but I absolutely adore lure fishing. And see some of you guys out there like um, uh, River Pycar, you know, uh, Dominic Fishing, UK, you know, Dom, I love Dom, absolutely funny guy. And then you also got the Scouse Angler, George. When you see you guys out there using these big lures and lures and stuff, it makes me really want to get out there and give them a go. Jack's a massive lure angler as well. He loves lure fishing. Um, I know I used to do a lot more of it, but I want to get back into it again. So yeah, I want to, I've got very minimal lure equipment at the moment, mainly lures, but I've got hardly any spinning rods, reels and all that bits and pieces, lure bags, so, you know, I know where a lot of my wages are going to be going on fishing tackle for the next month or two, uh, until I've got everything that I pretty much need. Um, other than that, yeah, there's no real update in terms of telling you what's going on apart from fishing and outside of fishing, so, like I say, I've got a couple of chips coming up. The one trip I've not mentioned, apart from fishing the Thames and over the docks and places like that, which is pretty much free fishing, um, I'm going away with Keith. Now, Keith, you've seen in the, very briefly, in the Mosasaur video, the first Mosasaur video. So we're gonna go uh, carp and catfishing down to Hawkehurst fishery. Yes, I don't mind talking about Hawkehurst fishery because it's a commercial. Um, I don't know whether to talk about it now, you'll actually see it in the sequence in a moment, but. I've decided, and don't take this the wrong way people, I'm not going to tell you some of the places I'm going to fish anymore. Now, I've already spoke about these places, so you do know what they're called, you do know where they are, you probably recognise them from the background, there's nothing I can do about that now. I think sometimes when you, you, you're you onto a good thing, I'm a little bit too generous. Like most people, I'm a little bit too generous with my, um, with my where I fish and my spots and how to fish from, um, and I think, I need to start protecting, especially pike, a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't mind talking about commercial fisheries and stuff, but please guys, don't ask me where I'm fishing, what spots I'm fishing, and you know, where I'm fishing, basically. I need to be able to, to keep a few things to myself. I think that's probably the wise thing to do. Um, but if you see me on the bank, like I say, don't, don't shy away, come over, say hello, you know what I mean? I'm talkative, I'll give you some tips, but like I say, from now on, if I, if I come onto a good thing again and I start getting into some fish and I find some really good spots um, and different lakes and rivers, I'm gonna keep them to myself, unless they're a commercial, okay? So I'm off my hobby horse, I'm off my, you know, I'm off my soapbox, whatever you wanna call it. So I don't mean to, to be rude, but I wanna keep some fishing for myself and I think I've been just a little bit too open with some of the places I fish. But like I say, some of you guys, you know where I fish now in some of the uh, locals and stuff like that. So, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. And just, I just need to learn how to protect. And I hope you guys understand, um, as I'm sure you probably do in your own fishing. So, anyway, without further ado, there's me babbling on a little bit. I've been talking for quite a while. 
Um, I hope the camera's come out okay. So it's a re really nice little camera. Um, I need to go home and watch the football. Um, like I say, I'm still at work. I will leave you with footage from my latest trip um, a week or two ago with Jack over the dock. So enjoy it and I will see you all very soon for the next vlog. Take care and tight lines. No word of a lie, this shoal of bream, there is not one fish under six pounds here. Oh, maybe one of about two pounds. Every single bream in this swim, and I am not lying because I know Jack used to fish for these, and there's one down there that's near double figure. Oh my good God, that one under the, that one down there has got to be eight to nine pound. Look at them, look, they're huge, they're like carp. Now, I never get excited about bream fishing, but when you see bream like this, this is absolutely incredible. I have never seen any bream tires like this before. For someone who's not a bream angler, I've got to come down here at some point for the bream. Now, years ago, I used to fish here with Jack, and he used to have numerous six pound pluses out. I could never catch them, only little skimmers, but when you see them this big, it's almost unfair to fish for them. They're so beautiful. A few nice ponds right there, look. Oh, mate, they're huge. They've got to come up for that bread, didn't they? I mean, they look preoccupied at the moment. Do you think it's a time for them now to... So, I'll just have to get this on video really, really quickly. But we're not down here for them today. We're down here for predators. So hopefully we can put one or two of them on the bank. Hello, so yes, I'm back fishing again. Oh, it's been a long time and it's really nice to be back on the bank. Um, it's June now, so it's not long until the river season opens. And I'm actually fishing over my local docks. Today's just a little bit of a, a reconnaissance mission. It's nothing serious. Um, some really good fish have been caught recently. I'm not gonna talk about it and tell you too much of what's happened because I don't wanna disrespect some of the anglers that have been fishing this area and having really good catches. So unless I catch fish myself or I'm with Jack today, as you can see, he's over there. Think you can catch him he's over there fishing as well lure fishing um, I'm not going to tell too many people where I'm going to be fishing from now on um, one thing I've learned over the last couple of months is to keep my mouth shut about my particular spots and swims now it's not me being RC um, I'm quite happy to willing to share information with people and if you come up and you see me fishing come say hello no problems but I'm going to start to keep things a little bit more closer to my chest unless I'm fishing somewhere like a commercial fishery so I'm going to kind of keep it to myself a little bit. Um, so yeah, going forward, uh, just doing a little bit of lure fishing, like I say, it's the heat of the sun at the moment. It's around two o'clock in the afternoon. So it's really, really hot. Um, I'm hoping that towards the end of the evening is when it's going to be the best chance for us to catch something. So it's nice just to be out on the bank. I'm um, going to show you a little bit of the sights and sands of the area. Um, if you recognize the place, then that's all good but I'm not going to name places and venues anymore, like I say, unless it's a commercial. So hopefully we can get a couple of predators. That's what we're out for. Uh, pike, Xander and Perch. Not seen too much as of yet. We have seen a little pike. Um, Jack tried to catch it earlier. Um, show you a little footage in a moment. Uh, didn't really catch it, didn't have no luck. But like I say, hopefully we'll catch anchor a little bit more later on. So without further ado, got my little jig rod, little redhead never caught on it yet hopefully we can catch something and uh, if we do I'll uh, log it on the camera and get back to you okay so we just spotted our first pike of the day which is really sort of a uh, didn't expect to see till later on so me being kind well not being kind Jack spotted him we're gonna see if Jack can hook him and his bait fish down there apparently Jack just said as well so we're gonna see if we can try and hook him it's worth a shot mate Might anger it. Put it right past his nose. Put it 
right in front, about a foot in front. I just popped it in again. It's really hard to see from there because I've just zoomed out again. This brings back memories of Keston. Oh yeah, 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 I see it. It's turning away a little bit, isn't it? Well, it's a good six pound, I reckon. Looks like it's got something caught in its mouth, but maybe it's just the mandible, part of the mandible, uh, the scissors where a lot of people hook into. Um, yeah, he's not, not interested, is he? Look, he's swimming off. Away, yeah. oh, maybe he'll go on the feed later. To, uh, to feed. It's a beautiful day, it's an absolutely lovely day. Sorry about my voice at the moment, it's a little bit uh, scratchy. It's the A fever playing up in my throat and my nose at the moment. So he's trying something a little different, he's just swam into the near margin, I can't see it. So what I'm going to do is just switch off for the moment. Bye bye, bye. If he hooks it, is he gone? So the pike, yeah, the pike's just swam off, it's just not interesting, someone's just had a pike off, you know, it's not even thinking mode, it's not even angry. It's probably just fed this morning and just not in the mood. So we're going to move up, try and maybe catch some uh, perch a little bit further up on this uh, London Docklands area. One or two last casts around this little bit. <coughs> I've hooked into a nice little perch. What's that, you little? Should I cast a net off? Nah, swing swinging in. Swing him. Swing him in. Good one, Paul. Mate, this is bigger than you think. <laughs> That's a bigger one That's than you nice, think. That's nice, mate. Oh, 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 oh. Steel, steel, steel. So, what's that, 14 ounces? 12? <clears throat> yeah. So we'll come a little closer. So, just doing a little bit of spinning stay, like I spoke to you earlier on. And I've had this nice little one. I've had uh, three or four on the bands. Jack's had a couple. Um, really good fun. We've got loads of little roach in front of us and uh, the perch is sitting underneath them. So we're just pulling little spinners through. Hoping we're going to catch some pike later on. But as you can see, little spinner in his mouth. Really enjoyed that. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is just get the spinner out and get it back. Howdy, so yes, we've just finished fishing uh, a certain area down the other end. Uh, you just saw some uh, perch, well you saw me catch a perch. Um, Jack had a perch as well, but I had about two or three perch. Um, all caught on spinners, tiny little MEP spinners and that. Um, it was quite funny because there was loads and loads of roach ready to spawn, just like there is the bream that you've seen in some of the, uh, the footage a minute ago. Um, there were loads and loads of bream and loads of carp swimming around. A few, the, the odd pike and that, so the place is alive with fish at the moment, but it's just that I think where they're, they're thinking about spawning, I mean it's quite late at the moment, but they're quite, you know, they're thinking of spawning, that it's quite hard to hook some fish. And um, we're fishing with lures as well, so we've done quite well, I think, you know, we were fishing uh, into a, a, a shoal of roach, and the perch was sitting underneath taking a smaller roach uh, every now and again, and bringing the lure through, we ended up hooking a couple of the uh, the perch underneath, you know, I think the biggest one I had, which you saw, was uh, 14 ounces, uh, which is not bad, just under a pound, I think. Didn't weigh it, but it's, it's quite obvious. Um, so yeah, we're just sitting here now, just had a refresh refreshment, a snaps, which I haven't had for uh, many a time. Snaps. And then we're gonna head down to another part and uh, give it a go down there, see if we can pick up one of the larger predators. Don't think there's any perch down there, but um, might be able to pick up a pike or something like that, and then, head home but no unless I get a, a fish or Jack gets a fish then uh, I will say this is probably the end so thanks for watching